What if the Tyrannosaurus rex was just an oversized chicken? Since the discovery of the first Tyrannosaurus rex fossils over a century ago, it has been imagined by most people as a massive, toothy, bipedal lizard. This image has largely been shaped by modern pop culture. However, scientists have recently come to a rather disappointing conclusion. The most fearsome predator of the dinosaur era may have evolved into an ordinary domestic chicken. In this video, we will explore the discovery of the familial connections between dinosaurs and modern birds, and we will find out just how closely related domestic chickens are to theropods of the Tyrannosauridae family. The first discoveries of Tyrannosaurus bones were made by American paleontologist Barnum Brown in the early 20th century. These were scattered bones from which scientists could only reconstruct the hind limbs. However, a few years later, researchers uncovered a skeleton that was nearly 50% intact. The most significant part of this find was the well-preserved skull. Impressed by its jaws and teeth, scientists dubbed this giant the king of the tyrant lizards. According to modern estimates, tyrannosaurs could reach lengths of up to 13 meters and stand as tall as 4 meters. They roamed the areas that are now the United States and Canada, and they may have also lived in the Asian part of Russia and neighboring countries. Tyrannosaurs weighed as much as 9 tons. Such size, combined with massive claws and teeth, powerful hind limbs, a large head, and a strong neck, allowed scientists to position this monster at the top of the food chain during the late Cretaceous period. For many years, the T. rex became the embodiment of the grandeur and bloodthirstiness of dinosaurs. However, with the emergence of evidence suggesting that dinosaurs had feathered coverings, many began to view this monster from a slightly different perspective. Although there is still no definitive evidence of feathers on the Tyrannosaurus rex itself, Numerous facts have emerged that undeniably demonstrate its close relationship with modern chickens. One of the most significant discoveries supporting the idea of birds descending from dinosaurs is the enigmatic Archaeopteryx. This creature exhibits characteristics typical of both groups and is considered a transitional form between them. In modern classification, Archaeopteryx belongs to the class of birds, but it differs significantly from contemporary representatives of this class. Archaeopteryx inhabited the European continent approximately 150 million years ago during the Jurassic period. It weighed around one kilogram and could reach lengths of up to half a meter. Scientists believe it was a predator and possibly capable of flight, aided by its nearly fully developed wings covered in feathers. However, its jaws were equipped with sharp teeth and bore no resemblance to a beak. Additionally, it possessed dinosaur-like features such as claws on its forelimbs and a bony tail. Currently, 12 fossil specimens of this creature are known to science. Studies of these remains have revealed that Archaeopteryx had feathers not only on its wings, tail tips, and toe bones but also on its legs, neck, and other parts of its body. At the time the first Archaeopteryx fossils were discovered, Darwin's theory had not yet been widely accepted by the scientific community and Archaeopteryx was classified as a bird. British scientist Thomas Henry Huxley attempted to support the theory that birds descended from dinosaurs, but his ideas were rejected by the scientific establishment at the time. As a result, the Tyrannosaurus rex remained entrenched in the public imagination as a massive carnivorous lizard, with no recognized connection to modern birds. The next major step toward acknowledging the link between dinosaurs and birds came nearly a century after the discovery of Archaeopteryx. In the 1960s, during excavations in southern Montana, paleontologist John Ostrom uncovered a previously unknown species of dinosaur, which he named Deinonychus, meaning terrible claw. Although Barnum Brown had described remains of this dinosaur 50 years earlier, he had mistaken them for bones of a completely different species. Ostrom compared the earlier specimens with his new finds and classified them as a new species within the Tyrannosaur family. Like Tyrannosaurus, Deinonychus was a predator, but much smaller in size. Standing just over one meter tall and measuring around three meters in length, Deinonychus weighed no more than 70 kilograms. Studying its preserved bones led scientists not only to suggest that it had a feathered covering, but also to propose, for the first time, that dinosaurs might have been warm-blooded. Additionally, Deinonychus possessed a relatively large brain. 
These discoveries revolutionized scientists' understanding of the appearance and behavior of theropods specifically and dinosaurs in general. In light of these findings, John Ostrom re-examined Archaeopteryx fossils and identified numerous shared traits with the newly discovered dinosaur. One of the most crucial pieces of evidence linking them was the identical wrist structure. The number and shape of Deinonychus's wrist bones allowed it to fold its forelimbs similarly to how birds do. Along its spine, Deinonychus also had openings characteristic of the avian respiratory system, entry points for air sacs. After the near-complete Tyrannosaurus skeleton named Sue was discovered, the similarities between its bone structure and that of birds became undeniable. However, evidence of feathers on T. rex remained elusive. Opinions vary on whether Tyrannosaurus was feathered. Given its much larger size compared to its feathered relatives, it's possible that it didn't require additional insulation. A similar pattern is observed in modern mammals. Smaller animals tend to have fur, while the largest, like elephants and rhinoceroses, have bare skin. This evolutionary adaptation helps regulate body temperature. Perhaps a fully feathered Tyrannosaurus would have struggled to survive in its environment, suffering from frequent heat stress. Another theory suggests that Tyrannosaurus was covered in a layer of protofeathers, akin to the downy plumage of modern birds. Further evidence supporting the descent of birds from theropods comes from similarities in reproductive behavior. It has been proven that many small, bipedal Sariscian dinosaurs, such as Oviraptor, incubated their eggs by warming them with their bodies, a process where feathers likely played a role. Moreover, the shape of many theropod eggs closely resembles that of bird eggs. While an elongated egg shape is advantageous for preservation, other egg-laying animals did not evolve this form. Of course, a giant like Tyrannosaurus probably did not incubate eggs directly. Its physiology was unlikely suited for such care, despite its avian similarities. Some researchers propose that Tyrannosaurus may have built specialized nests that created an optimal microclimate, much like crocodilians, another close relative of birds, do today. In the year 2001, paleontologist Mary Schweitzer was examining a piece of Tyrannosaurus femur under the microscope when she made a truly astonishing discovery. Inside the bone were remnants of soft tissues that are similar to substances found in modern birds, formed only during the incubation of eggs. These bones are referred to as medullary bones. Their presence in tea, Rex provided yet another piece of evidence supporting Thomas Huxley's hypothesis, proposed in the late 19th century, that birds are descendants of theropods. Of course, it would be completely inaccurate to say that our domesticated chickens are the same as the terrifying tyrannosaurs that once roamed the earth millions of years ago. However, modern science has gathered enough evidence to confirm their undeniable relationship. We can only speculate that if dinosaurs hadn't gone extinct 66 million years ago, the descendants of the fearsome Tyrannosaurus rex might now resemble fluffy chicks, perhaps just a bit larger. We thank the viewers who watched this video to the end. To learn more about other evolutionary theories and the origins of modern living beings, we encourage you to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything.